don't get any problems with the time. Now, please welcome for uh, the first presentation, not from Mr. Huber, following the somewhat spontaneous second presentation. Now, we welcome our sponsor, Content Serve, in the person of Ergon Vircek. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Who will today? Who has today um, taken the place of Michael Kugler, who is unable to be here today? And in his uh, presentation, he will talk about offering your customer the purchasing experience that they expect. No need for me to say anything else to so let him introduce himself. If you have any questions concerning the presentation afterwards, then please go to one of the microphones at the side here so that uh, the interpreters can hear the questions. Otherwise. Enjoy the presentation. Over to you, Mr. Vicek. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome to you all. Um, very pleased to be able to speak to a larger audience today. Um, finally, uh, again, I can stand up here on, on the stage. And I hope that you will maintain your level of attention as we go through. I've stepped in today from Michael Kugler, who was unable to attend at short notice. But as we are a closely knit team, and I'm quite familiar with content to serve work, then I look forward to talking to you over the next 30 to 40 minutes. A couple of words about myself, because uh, you know uh, I'm pleased to be able to deliver this um, presentation, because uh, I can present some highlights from my experience. I have worked with various companies uh, with responsible for acquisition, social analytics, social engagement, and that my that that what is that's what has become my major customer experience. And if I that's what will remain as my background, but. I've also concerned myself with PIM, Web CMS, and CMS. Um, um, uh, percentage between 16 and 18 percent, and overall, this is a very good. Uh, this is very good experience to enable me to talk about these two um, interrelated companies: customer data, the topic of PIM, I, customer experience, and on the right hand side, you see product data. And my major uh, th uh, topic today is context. To put everything into context, I've not uh, consulted Horst, but but he he has already mentioned several key points in his presentation, and I would like to follow up on these in uh, the in the coming minutes, because there is customer experience and a different experience, uh, the other which I would call total customer experience, and that's the red line. Uh, if w ultimately we look at uh, what uh, ultimately uh, drives uh, consumers or decision makers to buy products, to decide in favor of products, and of course, these are specialist and rational aspects, but also uh, the feelings and the emotional aspect is important. And I think it's good that we just don't make decisions on a rational basis, but we also allow our passion and our heart to, to come into play. This is, of course, something where that where p uh, behavior changes on a continuous basis, because, uh, of course, of course, we also change at the same time. There is not uh, a new type of customer behavior that uh, uh, on one important factor is that we ourselves want to carry a research our ourselves. We don't want advising. We don't want information that we have not researched ourselves. Um, I think I'm a prototype in that respect. But there are also other things such as is this is this a good company? Does the company represent my values, or is it perhaps a company that uh, uh, has poor working conditions, poor social aspects, and uh, um, that ultimately these changes in 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 purchasing type? Of course, this changes or makes the technical and emotional aspects all the more important. And if I then see that um, 
uh, if I see I myself or other people, I start to see a change taking place from the classical forms of behavior, of selling behavior um, um, for, compared to the past, then, then there are lots of aspects involved. I don't want to, to go into detail on every point, but for me, uh, I see a change uh, in so far that uh, I uh, would like to see products in every channel available to me. And also, I personally also want to determine the type of communication, telephone, email, whatever. And uh, as Horst said, this is, uh, of course, a transformation process. And it's fascinating to see to what extent or to, uh, where customers uh, have now got in terms of re mapping this customer experience, or perhaps they've not got to the stage where they should be. Because, OK, you say, no, things should be 100%. One, one, but no, 87% of customers ultimately uh, expect only a personalized or contextualized uh, purchasing experiences. I'm surprised by the fact that not everybody wants this, but at the same time, there are many customers or people who are disappointed and, and don't see their needs catered to. And so given this fairly large gap, you can see that there is still a lot of work to be done in terms of uh, covering customer expectations. And not wishing to go into the to, to go through all the points listed, one important aspect, which is an overriding aspect, uh, and which is one some one thing that is very important in in uh, optimizing the customer journey. Um, this sounds better in in German in English than in German, but these are different aspects that are important: content, context, and. There's, a, of course, a lot of hard work and graft involved in keeping up to date. And why is uh, is this the case? Why is my my brief uh, observation is that it, this is why the subject is so difficult to implement. One reason for this is th the fact that there, there are separate processes uh, anchored in departments that uh, are then uh, firmly entrenched in the minds of the colleagues to, on the one hand for some customer journey is a marketing thing. The marketing people take care of this and they, they concern themselves with this customer journey support, search support and, and so on. And use the information that we from the product journey side provide you with. Whether this information is good or bad or relevant or not relevant, then that's it's a major challenge, and communication, a good corporate culture, plays an important role here. And far worse, or shall we say, the situation, the challenge gets all the bigger if all departments were to work with the same form of technology. And but things get more difficult if ultimately these different types of technologies, stacks, if, if I see all these different types of technology, these stacks, on the left-hand side, we have customer experience. And you can see yourself that there are over 5,000 providers. And that's a conservative estimate. Some people have, uh, see a lot more. And they, these are all the people uh, offering products around this customer experience, customer journey, covering various aspects. And these have a certain advantage because they are because they are younger companies, three, four, five years old. They don't have these inherited burdens from fixed installations. So everything is ready in clouds. Um, the systems can be integrated very quickly and disintegrated again or replaced again very quickly. This is an advantage for you as a as a provider or uh, as a customer. For you as a customer, it's an advantage. As a provider, of course, it's a challenge. And this is, there is, a, it's a very complex task uh, uh, integrating these different technologies. Uh, uh, on the other side, another stack with a lot 
fewer uh, providers, but no less complex is the product experience side, where you have ERP, PLM, PIM, DAM systems, which are in increasingly integrated into, say, e-commerce systems. But ultimately, it remains a challenge of integration. Um, and that's why uh, there is a need to build bridges. And even if I am standing here today as a provider, it's not something that can be t take place from one day or one year to the next. It's a transformation process, a change in your company and also in other companies, increasingly towards customers. It's easier said than done. And actually, doing it is something that uh, you can integrate or should integrate into strategies, roadmaps, because we, uh, on the provider side, uh, this will brings me more to the actual subject, we ultimately help you to uh, integrate the two sets today and also in in 10 years, even if by then the names would have changed. And some of you may still be right on the left-hand side of this chart. You may still be using an ERP system that's monolithic, that uh, perhaps uses print channels or e-commerce channels, and it, that is very static, all fine. That's not, it's not bad being on that side, but you must identify your position in the market and look at where you can improve. And there are also uh, successive improvement and extension stages depending on, you know, as you need more languages, more channels, that all the more you need technology in order to be able to reach the ideal situation um, that the, as defined by the technologies because this results in a situation where you are composable, you can combine the best modules, find the best solutions, and on the product side, you can offer a customer experience and not just uh, a good quality of data. That's the preparation for the concretization that will take place in the coming charge. Now, again here, we're talking about contextualization. I ultimately taking the product information and uh, placing these together with the con customer data in the r in the correct context. A couple of examples before I then start to deal with the technology in the business to consumer um, area. Uh, a couple of examples come to mind. So I, I have one for B two C and one for B two B. Here we can see an ideal running shoe, no four stripes, not three, and uh, no logo. So you, you can quickly see it's a product, it has attributes, and it has various characteristics. And the also fact in reality, it has um, different target groups that um, that are, re are required or which I wish to approach. On the one hand, I have a style shopper. On the second, secondly, I have a, a spare time runner or a, a, a passionate runner. And of course, I want to adapt the products of the quality for the, of the product for this. So what do I do? I think about this is a, a product marketing uh, aspects. I look at what context I wish to create. So I take one of the or the other target groups define the uh, the differences um, that these people, which in, in my opinion, these people, uh, which they have based on different uh, customer uh, surveys, I define the context and then feed this into existing channels. Easily said. And let me, I will f later show you how we do this. Uh, ultimately, the situation 
for Chris, the style shopper, I have defined the situation where uh, I need picture material. Uh, they, uh, they, she needs to, see, or he needs to see the cool shoes, how they fit in with his jogging trousers, and the text. Perhaps those at the front will be able to read the text. I've kept the text simple. I put this into Chat GPT, um, and. Uh, this is just uh, an, an example. And uh, on the other hand, I have the spare time uh, jogger who looks for different characteristics. And here again, also, I have the passionate uh, runner who trains intensively and, of course, requires um, completely different um, aspects, characteristics from the shoe. And this is an example of contextualization. The same thing, of course, applies to B2B. Uh, this is a very masculine uh, tool, a, a, a power drill, um, a tool that can drill and also um, uh, tighten screws. And I, I myself bought one of these uh, power tools last year. And of course, they, these power tools have characteristics that are not uh, uh, that are not relevant for all uh, target groups. But more here in this example for different vocational groups, uh, for a construction worker, a carpenter, or a mechanic. Then for each of these, the context is different. And here. I have again uh, written, divided the characteristics up by product, context, and channels. So interesting here is the question, what is differentiation? Here I have a 400 Newton meter uh, drill. My personal one only has 40 in it, it to twist my hands off. So I would like, I don't understand how people hold these with one hand, but obviously there are strong uh, professional craftsmen, not just hobby DIY experts like me. And here, in terms of visualization, you can see the photos, the text, which change depending on the context uh, in which I wish to present my structure, my content. And here, this is uh, with workshops and uh, automobiles. This is an example to introduce you to the subject of contextualization. And that's why, at the end, I've uh, asked the question, uh, if I have different uh, target people in, in this area, then the question is, why are they still here? Why is or when is context for me relevant? The question, so what? And that's why we've given consideration to this. and. Here, I've broken this down into B2B manufacturers, B2B manufacturers, and as well as retailers, i.e. the classical wholesale trade. And the, the main thing here, uh, let, let me c uh, complete the uh, chart, and then we can see, it ultimately, it's about the emotionality of the product. You can see on the, on the left-hand side, energy, consumer articles are not that emotional. So here we have different target groups to deal with. Energy, well, energy, is that important for someone who is positioning these as, as a tenant or a, an owner of an apartment, perhaps that's not a good idea. But the more product I have, or the more products I have that uh, generate a certain emotionality or a certain practicality, then the more, uh, the, the better I can use this contextualization. And this uh, breakdown should not be regarded as, as black and white, but should just provide you with a, a logical framework where as, as showing where this storyline is intended to lead. And I think th this is nevertheless um, a, good, uh, uh, a good breakdown. A question to the audience, because I'm talking so quickly and still have so much time. Who is engaged in personalization, in contextualization in their channels? Raise your hands if you do. 
Nobody? Great. So, there's yeah, someone here that was sort of perhaps maybe depends on the situation, yeah? Okay, great. What uh, products are you involved with? The uh, answer is off mic. Inaudible. Okay. No microphone. Still no microphone. Speaker is inaudible. Okay. Did that, that everyone was everyone able to uh, hear? Otherwise, I'll repeat the answer. Thank you for your comments. This gentleman is from a, um, from a uh, a lighting provider that is more involved in the B two B. So buildings, office buildings, office building equipment, and they are thinking in terms of difference, differentiation, in terms of differing characteristics. I hope that summarized it correctly. Yeah, okay, cool, now let's carry on. How can I structure the contextualization? If you've not reached this stage yet, then this is th th we're coming to the most important charts for you. So what do I do now? If you have a PIM or a, P a, s a similar system to a PIM, then you no doubt have already have standard channels where you have classified your product information and where you've um, structured these for the output. And then depending on the efficiency of your PIM system, you can not only uh, use these standard channels for generating output, but you can also also use free channels, newsletters, websites, or then the different people or target groups that then uh, and then use the different. Uh, uh, boxes for your contextualization. And after that, as a standard means, you just need a good PIM, and then you can start. Off you go with the corresponding output and the contextualization. So this means the first step is not that difficult. If you have good data and, and, and can implement categorization, et cetera, characterization in your PIM system. The next step, and this is just visualized through a return channel, understanding customers, i.e. converting this drill uh, for carpenters, um, con con designing it better for carpenters than for mechanics. That's where I need product experience. Uh, in the PIM system, which then uh, generate a, a complete product experience. And this is something that I, again, wish to show with a short video. And in preparation, you will see that we have a top uh, type of static integration, which we can implement. Uh, which is what that which is possible uh, as a standard basis without uh, uh, carrying out any dynamic uh, uh, adaptation. But at the same time, I would like to show you um, uh, I how integration uh, can work function with coupling. So let's start. This is a video. I will explain it. Uh, the mouse has to trace the cursor, should uh, trace. This is new territory for me. Commenting a video is like a, a, a sport broadcast, uh, following the cursor across the, the penalty spot. So what can I see here is our demonstration for sports products. I'll be clicking again. And this site 
has different products and different product categories. Bicycles, clothing, sports clothing, and also accessories. And my star product, on which I wish to focus, is a rucksack. This rucksack, of course, has various product attributes. And you can see this rucksack just wants to be referred to as a rucksack. But if I go to the, the into the PIM, I see all the products that um, I have already synchronized in the Magento shop. And here I see a product, my rucksack, which has been prepared for the uh, output and marketing has provided me with all the descriptions that I need in order to create this um, output, marketing text, as well as the attributes. And of course, pictures. Pictures in a, in a general context. And now we, we've start uh, creating context. Here I have two contexts, ladies and gentlemen. And for the ladies, I have um, uh, uh, defined a separate image. And uh, here I have um, made the marketing description somewhat more uh, ladies specific. The same, of course, applies to uh, men. Of course, they will be approached uh, in, in a correspondingly different manner. And then this is the preparation for this context. And here you can see uh, 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 the, some of the tabs are gray because not everyone is able to carry out these changes. And now the validation. You log on to the website through the uh, e-commerce system into the CM system, and then that then knows your gender. And look, here you see it is just there's a, a change has just been conjured up. All this can be done with CX technology, but who uh, feeds the CX technology? Here we have uh, uh, this uh, taken over this targeting into the process so that we have closer interlinking and create a more in depth product integration. And here you can see men and personalization uh, is carried out. For those who uh, who have seen a personalized e-commerce demonstration, this is nothing new. But this is an integrated into PIM. So now back to what you can see. I'm now uh, under product. And I now create uh, further context, a further context, i.e. a context that um, that is intended to present the real-time integration. So changes that I carry out in the PIM system are then uh, sent via the uh, CX system direct onto the, onto the web. So, so these changes can be carried out in real time, and I um, can then work in close cooperation with other departments. So that was the first section. And the second part uh, has more to do with uh, more in-depth data integration with return channels. Uh, here, this, the situation is as follows. I have a different product, i.e. my uh, a different rucksack. And here I define, I first of all define my target group within this product. So this is a casual user, a user or or a routine user who, who goes walking on a more regular basis. And then for these different contexts, I have uh, an an adapted text. OK, now let's take a short break in here. And then, of course, the same for the expert product. And what then happens, I know you don't yet, 
this is published. And on the website, I then have the, see the following. I have I don't on, on a, I don't carry out targeting on the customer profile level, but uh, based on the browser behavior of, of the customer. Here, uh, he uses he or she uses content on my website as an expert or as a, a beginner, and uh, I then classify this person and uh, attribute very different products to this person. So I use take the dynamic browser experience and then uh, I use this to classify the information accordingly. And this is what is shown here. And here you can see that the uh, various things can be um, se separated. Ladies, beginners is, is separate or in part sometimes combined. OK, that is basically what um, we what we have in our roadmap in order to start you know, on a step-by-step -step basis based on our capabilities. So I have now come to my summary, my conclusion. I, the generating content or generating more content is worthwhile. But this is a challenge. It's a challenge uh, uh, to generate this as as, w as well or as automatically and as simply such that um, I can uh, obtain the higher performance figures. So it's very important <coughs> to use technology that enables me to achieve this. We, as a, uh, as a leading PIM uh, solution provider, we are pioneers in this respect. You can s you've seen the video. We can um, implement this on a technological level. And for you, all the, the only new challenge that you have is not only being consistent and not only offering qualitatively high level products, but also the challenge of making these relevant. So off you go, get to work. Thank you for listening. That is all. F from me, I think I've kept to the time, two or three minutes for questions. And then I've had a pleasant 40 minutes up here. Thank you very much. Who um, would like to ask the first question? At the back, please. Microphone, please. Microphone. Uh, we can't hear, no microphone. How do you handle crawl? This is a CX question. Um, to be honest, crawler are we are crawler agnostic because we provide the information. And in actual fact, this is the question related to your CX CM system or the system that creates the web content. It's a question of how it deals with with this. We. Uh, um, uh, we, I can't provide any uh, additional answer to this because we are agnostic in this respect. If you're interested, and now this is uh, promoting my own company, my colleague Alexander Verld will uh, uh, be delivering a presentation on chat GPT and how you can generate automatic content. I think that presentation, I'm not sure in which room it will be, room one. So that's what my colleague will be talking about. I looked at his presentation yesterday. It's it's uh, a good presentation. It goes into detail uh, about the product. It's very specific. And 
there you will learn how we can help you uh, in this aspect. And ultimately, it's about um, carrying out this transformation step by step. OK, any more questions? Or or, or be just waiting for the next presentation. No more questions.